Whether you enjoy camping, bushcraft, or survival training, we all have one thing in common, the love for the outdoors. Chris and I have been camping since we were kids, but there's a big difference between camping and a full-on bushcraft experience. Neither of us are experienced or trained in the art of bushcraft survival, which is why we've decided to film our journey from average Joe to fully capable and experienced outdoor survivalists. Obviously, for safety reasons, our adventures in the first season will be modified to ensure that we don't put ourselves in danger. There's a lot of things that can easily go horribly wrong when you're in the middle of nowhere and lack the necessary skills to survive a legitimate disaster. Can We Survive is about learning and perfecting the necessary skills and knowledge that would be needed to live in the wilderness for an extended period of time. Join us as we learn the skillful art of bushcraft survival here on Can We Survive. Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to another Can We Survive adventure video. Hello. Niels is behind the camera right now. I'm out here, we're using our, our portable because we're what we're doing is we've come about eight miles out into the middle of nowhere, national forest, fire roads and creek beds, going over trees, rocks, boulders, everything. So we've, we've adventured super deep into the forest. We're gonna actually go up here, survey, because we can see a lot of sunlight up there, so it might be open, there might be some flat, and then also look down up onto that ridge. If we can't find anything ideal, we did find a spot, not the, you know, we don't like it super close to the road, but again, we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. There's nobody around. We've got the Jeep and you know, it's, you know, freezing temperatures here. Yeah. So we want to be safe as well. We're well, not we professionals. It's, so. like it's like an old logging yeah. road and yeah. probably used by a forestry service if something happens to get back in. But down trees like this, I'm, I mean, I'm hitting the top of my windshield. That's how low they are. They're yeah. going over. Not used a lot. Yeah, it's good. It's good All right, stuff. so let's get, uh, let's, we're not going to bring anything with us. We're going to actually just go up there and see what's going on. So, ah, looks like we weren't the only ones with the idea. But look, there's, there's plenty of firewood right here with this one down tree. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look. Oh, there's a half a pit yeah. here. Yeah. Somebody's been here before. At some point, but some look. It's, it's old, really old. old. Real old, yeah. That's a couple of seasons old there. Yeah, for sure. No one's been here in a while. I was told there would be no walking during this adventure. <laughs> What's with all the walking and survival? <laughs> huh? It's not just that though, like we're around 6,500 feet. You get yeah. winded fast. Oh yeah. Like I said, we might have to clear a little bit out of this. You got a flat area right there. Move that, that crap there, move that. I don't know about that log. to get but... this side from the sun. Oh yeah. It's not too bad, like it's kind of wide open. Got a nice flat, flat area there, but you know, we have to put two tents. We want to build a lean-to fire pit, so it's... There's a lot of firewood at those other two little yeah. flat areas. It's just this, there's like, it's already been like kind of cleared, right? Yeah. Definitely, I don't know if you can tell, but right here, it just dro it just drops off. We're yeah, one we're like on a knob. Feet. It drops almost in all directions. That way, that way, that way, that way. Like this literally is on, like right on the knob. You know, 7.30 is when the sun starts coming up and 5.30 is when it's almost pitch black. So we do not have a lot of time. We got to get this camp set up. So where do we think in tents right, right where you are? I'm in that? Maybe tents right here. Yeah. Maybe a, a wind wall right here. Yeah. Between like, this tree and because I at my back is the solid wind right now. Yeah. Are we going to use like maybe use the tarp on that I'm or thinking, something? Yeah, because there's a really block it of, out of of branches that we can use. So we'll we'll do a cross piece. Yeah. And use the tarp as a blocker. All right. So what are we doing? We're on the lookout for a cross beam for our for our windbreaker. Yeah, kind of uh, like a win, uh, lean to, but we're not sleeping in it, so it's not really a lean to. It's, using the same idea as a lean-to, but for a windbreak for our fire, right? Yeah. Good thickness. Is it pretty solid? Dude, I think this actually might do. Oh, <laughs> we nice. just walked like a few. That was not pre-planned. <laughs> nope. No, we haven't even come down on this side.
out looking for deadfall or you know dead standing I saw this piece here which if you guys maybe you can tell more from looking at that but it's actually the flowering part of the yucca and I picked it up I'm like oh, it's probably gonna be too soft but it's it's super lightweight and it's very strong like way stronger than the deadfall it's like hollow yeah it's hollow kind of like bamboo so we got two uh, two pieces of those and while I was out I'm gonna show you guys too some stuff that I found that I thought was really interesting good for the area as well no at first I thought I honestly I thought I saw a uh, mountain lion paw and I was like oh I don't want to be in a, <laughs> a, a hunting ground for that that's not very cool but it ended up being deer oh deer oh deer that's right over there somewhere right yeah there's lots a lot of a lot of uh and they're fresh actually <laughs> Nice spear. And they're almost perfectly straight too, dude. Yeah, it's good. Lunch time. It's my favorite part of the day. <laughs> you know what's weird if you think about this for what? a second? How long has it been since you actually sat down? Two and a half, three hours? Yeah, yeah. We've been yeah. walking around setting up camp. Yeah, we're constantly on the move. You're just you don't We got stop. Uh, wool blankets that we're sitting on. Uh I get these are old military that's an Italian military surplus. Yeah, some this cool is cool stuff. A, uh US military surplus wool blankets. Yeah, they good, for nice good. and comfy for sitting down really on, good, like yeah. in the dirt here when we have the fire going and everything like that. It's perfect. We got the the tarp up, prevent the wind from hitting us. This is actually this is actually comfortable. I'm not sure if I want to get up after. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I actually left uh, this amount of water in my uh, what are they called Nalgene? Yeah, the Nalgene bottles or whatever. I left it in there because I found. Uh, I think I mentioned it already. If I didn't. There's ants, so we were getting some of the rocks. We still got to get more rocks for the fire, for the fire pit. But some of the big ones, when I lifted it, I thought they were termites. Turns out they were actually ants, and I was like, "Holy mackerel! Those are some of the biggest ants I've ever seen." What I read up on before we left, again, you know, it's we're not experts, so that's what we're doing here. We're like learning this stuff, and it's a ton of fun. And we were gonna make mistakes and everything like that, but um, you leave a little bit of water in here. You throw the ants in there so that they don't climb out, and then you boil them and eat them. So what is this? What do we got? We've got a uh, freeze-dried Mountain House beef stew. Uh huh. I picked this up at Sportsman's Warehouse. The expiration date on this says it's best by August of August. 2046. Oh, I hope that's good. That looks like hash browns in there. Mm. Huh? You have a good not? history with hash browns. I didn't have a hash brown though. It was oh, just that's a great. sandwich. Maybe if you did, so I barfed. It would have settled your stomach down. I don't know. Vegetarian for months, and then all of a sudden, a McDonald's sausage and egg McMuffin. Not a good combo. Not a good combo. And 7,600 feet. So I'm like, you're gonna have to pull over. You're like, well, you, you couldn't really pull over just anywhere because it was all. You had to wait till those turnouts because it was a mountain road going up it pretty good. I was trying to get through it though. I was trying to be like, all right, I'll just you know. I'll just go through it. I won't. No, feel you barf. said if you if you can pull over up here pretty soon, I might need you to pull over. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Then you're like, I'm gonna need you to pull over. <laughs> but then you refine the first one. Mm, yeah. And then you're like, oh, I feel a little bit better. We started yeah, going. I couldn't barf. I was just like, Ugh. you're gonna need to pull over now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know Wait, what? I totally forgot. What? I what? brought what? my spoon. What? Like, Are you sure? Yeah, I did. Woo! I was gonna try and set them up. Any one of these types of stoves, I think, all work pretty good. Especially if we're not ready to start a fire or anything like that yet. So why why bother? Just have this with us. Easily packable. Ha <laughs> ha! Spoon. I've forgotten a spoon twice on trips like this. Not something you want to do. Okay, so about 10, 12 minutes. Split it up into my thing and he can eat out of the bag. But it's good. I mean, big chunks. Smells of amazing. Peas, uh, potato, carrot. All kinds of stuff. It's pretty yeah. good. And we were talking while this thing was like heating up. We were talking about, you know, if you go on websites and you're looking up like what are the best outdoor or, you know, camping or hiking type foods. And they're always like Mountain House has probably got one of the best flavors. But they're like, oh, it's really high in sodium. I'm like, you know what? It's not like we're eating it every single day. That's like you made a good point. And I'm like, and in a real survival situation, do you really care about your, your sodium level? Mm -hmm. I want something to taste good, you know? Yeah. I'm actually getting really warm, dude. Oh, yeah. The sun, I got a t-shirt on. Sun's uh, 
heating me up. Nice. Brought the Canadian. <laughs> I wonder if there's some some limitation written in the law mm. if they say you can't hunt within X amount of oh, distance of a tank. Because it's almost unfair. It, it you there's it's yeah, it's called it's called good sportsmanship. Mm. It's like not hunting over bait. You yeah, know? it's the only watering hole in the area. Yeah, I wonder. And being able to hunt near that, I don't think that would apply to squirrel and rabbit, though. No. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. I might be trying to hunt a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to use this to get some uh, ants. You know, we got to set up our tents first, too, before the, the sun sets. But we got to get rocks for the fire, mm -hmm. which is where I'm going to find the ants. Hopefully collect enough of them to try them later, which I'm, I don't think you're going to be trying them. I'm full. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm good, thanks. You know, in a real survival situation, you gotta eat, and insects are a huge source of protein, so. What was that thing you found out about crustacean? Mm. I thought that was super cool, because I was reading uh, types of bugs that are safe to eat, crickets, grasshoppers, um, you know, some caterpillars, earthworms. But, you know the little pill bugs? Uh, or they called sow bugs, pill bugs, and I forget there's another name for them. But you know, if you touch them, they curl up into a little ball. They're not bugs at all. They're actually the only land-based crustacean in North America. They're related to the crabs and, and shrimp. They actually, mm. And they said when you cook them, they taste like shrimp. Those little pill, I say pill bugs, I, I now I don't even want to use the word bug, but I don't know what else to call them, yeah. sow bugs, pill bugs, but they're actually related to the crustacean. They're, close, they're closer related to a crab than they are any insect or bug. I was like, wow, that's really cool. I was actually looking for them because I wanted to try it. I wanted to see if they taste like shrimp. All right, lunch is done. It's uh, time to set up our tent camp. So we got our wind shelter here for, for nighttime. The sun sets so early this time of year and we're not gonna be able to fall asleep. You know what I mean? Like we're not gonna be able to fall asleep at 5.30 in the afternoon. So we need to, to have a, a, a camp that's as comfortable as possible. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna get it set up now and we have such limited daylight, so we gotta get going. I wanna actually get rid of as many pine cones. I don't wanna get rid of any of the needles, like the needles here. I don't wanna get rid of that because it's actually cushiony and it uh, acts as an insulator too against the actual ground. There's my tarp, which you can use for ground uh, insulation or cover, is being used as our wind blocker. So, you know, naturally you do this. If you watch those, you know, the real survival shows, they always talk about building a bed, an insulating bed to get yourself off the ground. Because if you're on the ground, it's going to suck the heat out of you. This is a new tent for you, eh? The yeah. Kelty? I had to get a new tent because the other one I had was way too small or yeah. it was on a trailer. So Yeah, yeah. This one was on sale at Sportsman's Warehouse. It's a Kelty, what does that say? Grand something? Grand Mesa Mesa 2. Grand Mesa, Mesa 2. Mesa, yeah. And it's a two-person tent, but these backpacking tents, we like to get the two-person for one person. It gives you, well, you extra room it, right? for your yeah, gear. For, for and you sure. got the REI one, which we yeah. both really like. I And I liked it. And I like the freestanding. None of this pegging down. I know you can peg it to open it up. I just yeah. don't like pegs in it. I don't like putting those things in. It's much easier. We're in a good spot here. Yeah, because you can just grab the top of it and move it around if you want. If yeah. it's not windy, you don't need to use pegs no, at all. Not, and maybe we'll find out tonight. It's not really windy right now. So we're gonna head down here because I saw some actual um, deer prints. Yeah. We actually saw, well, right here, this is what alerted us to deer in the area. You can see it's been pushed forward and then there's another spot here. So it's just, you gotta be really observant. You see this, but I did actually find the, the, clothing, the, hoof? the hoof further down here, but in getting rocks for the, the fireplace when I was lifting them up, there was some giant, that's why I'm bringing this bottle of water I read that uh, if you're gonna try and eat bugs and stuff you put them in here so they can't crawl all over the place and then oh, nice. you just pour the water in and boil them Is that a burl? possibly it goes down in there right beside the stump another one there definitely burrows yeah. actually I like uh, stumps and I don't know much about animals I'd like to learn Part of my enjoyment too of Can We Survive is learning about nature, learning about what burrows and, and footprints. It's, you know, you're, you guys are along for the trip with us and we're learning. No, nope, not deep enough. Oh, 
Well, we didn't walk too far. We came across some scat here. Uh, it looks like rabbit pellets. Uh, as far as I know, that's. it looks like rabbit. You want to try one? Or maybe it's chocolate. It looks like bonbons. <laughs> I wonder if it tastes like bonbons. Are, is this rabbit, if any of you guys know outdoor stuff, rabbit, like look, you can see the size of my finger here. Rabbit versus deer. It's pretty small. It's small, I, I'm pretty sure. But I would say it's big for a rabbit, small for I found deer. some, let's compare though, because this, here this goes. definitely looks like rabbit. Definitely looks like rabbit, and I found some other stuff that's bigger than this. So I don't know if that's deer or whatever, but it was definitely bigger than that stuff there. Oh, there's another thing too I wanted to, came across, maybe it's actually this. If you don't have natural uh, like twine or anything, I was like, oh, is this stuff soft? But look at this. Like that, yeah. dude, that is, it is incredibly strong. That you could crazy. you could use that as twine. That stuff is so strong, easily tie something together. If you were gonna make a lean-to with that, look for local stuff and look how long that is. That's yeah. perfect, eh? If you were actually going to, you tie might even need to be able to strip it in half and make two. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That stuff is crazy strong, man. Crazy. What'd you find? I just found a tarantula, dude. This is the first time. I, whoa, that sucker is the biggest spider I've ever seen. Here, you got to come on this angle here. Ah, oh, he just slipped away, dude. Holy crap balls! Right down into that area there. I don't want to. I lifted this looking for ants, but right down in there, big hairy friggin' tarantula. That's the first tarantula I've ever seen. <laughs> How big, the size of your hand or? No, 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 he was like maybe uh, a baby. He was about two oh. about two inches maybe. Oh, okay. So not huge, That's but. That's nothing. No. It's the biggest spider I've seen naturally anyway. So I'm out here, I was looking for deer scat and I can hear, I heard something over there crunching. You hear that? I don't know if it's a deer. Something. It's not like I can sneak up on it, as you can hear. I'm not exactly a predator. What the hell? Oh my god, it's a bird. It's right in there. I don't even know if you guys can see this in that stupid bush. Oh, it's wide open here. Maybe I should try some hunting. I was trying to find that uh, that other scat. It was totally different from what is that? You know, the bird's right in the tree there. Too bad I didn't have a telescopic lens, you could see it better. Well, I found these, I don't know if they're termites or uh, ant babies, but I mean, you could technically eat those. Just cook them up or whatever, boil them. Tons of protein in it, right in there. Uh, there. Can you see it a little bit better there? A little bit better? Yeah, so I mean, if you were starving, lift up raw, it's not gonna give you a ton of uh, you know, calories or anything, but it is something. If you, and they're under almost every single rock. If you can stomach it, it'll give you a tiny bit of of food. Probably nothing substantial, nothing that's gonna make it through some sort of crazy catastrophic survival situation, but it's something. Well, I found some more, but that just looks like dried up rabbit poop. The other ones that I found were, I don't know, or are those. There's, there's my finger right beside it. No, I'm not gonna touch it. What's wrong with you people? Um, but it's it's lighter. Maybe that it's a little bit bigger, but I don't know. I don't know what that could be. I mean, there's coyotes, there's fox. I don't know what any of their scat looks like. I know deer is kind of like pellet form, and same with bunnies. But uh, I'm gonna do one more search. If I don't find it, then forget it. I give up. I give up. I searched basically all all of these trees. I mean, I found little things. I found the the deer bird. Well, it's so quiet here when I hear rustling. I'm like, ooh, I wasn't thinking like a bird on the ground, but that bird, I don't know what kind of bird that is. I used to actually bird watch. Don't make fun. I actually liked it, okay? Don't make fun. I found that other scat. No idea what it is. Looked like it was old. This other stuff was fresh. It was dark. Uh, it had like a, like a nutty flavor to it. <laughs> I didn't taste it. I'm not at that level yet. So Niels took off about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes ago with his little pink 22 rifle looking for some rabbit or tree squirrel, which we haven't seen much of any today, but we did see some the other day when we were adventuring around. So, so he might be really well camouflaged. I'll have to look and see. We already set up a direction, you know, single direction only to be shooting at so we don't 
crossfire back into camp. See a lot of deer tracks around. A lot of deer. I'll try not to make too much noise because he's probably bedded down looking at wow, a ton of acorns on the ground here. Don't want to spook anything if he's on the hunt. But this ground is so loud. So I've been walking around pretty far, pretty far down like a ridge line. This looks like a really nice area here because you, you can see through the trees down. So anything, hey, I see a pink rifle. You went pretty far, huh? Yeah. You see anything? Nothing. I, I got to here and I'm like, man, this is a good area because you actually yeah. have, uh, you yeah. can see a lot of space down there. Originally on, where was I? Forward a little bit, it actually plateaus down there. Yeah. But it's all downhill then back up. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I did find something. Yeah? Similar to what I found earlier, you might want to zoom in on this. Oh, you have poo in your hand? So those are not, they're like elongated rather than yeah. the pellet size, right? Yeah. So what the hell is that? Well, is it the elongated ones of rabbit and the pellet or deer? See, that's what I don't know. You guys need to tell us. Which one is it? What poo do I have in my hand? I don't know if you got any tips, if you guys have ever hunted squirrel or rabbit. A know. for effort. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm out here with my pretty pink gun. It's like the pretty in pink. That's right. It's, that's nice. Yeah, she, she, everyone can spot that thing a, a mile two away. two-time scope on there and you're yeah, good to go. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's perfect. Just a little 22. Yeah. Perfect for squirrel, rabbit. Yes, sir. Let's get out of here. Well, we got a fire going, but we know we're going to run out. Bob the Builder. Yeah, a nice little chunk Found there. Found this on the ground. Oh, it's not even rotted, eh? No, it was just laying yeah, right over nice. there. Nice. We found a little bit of stuff like that that's white and, you know, yeah. uh, a few pieces that we were able to put in the in the fire to start it. We were able to, to get some of that nice clean stuff. But it's going to burn through so fast because it's not hardwood, it's softwood. So you're doing good on the, on the wood here. Yeah. What kind of wood is that? I... Uh, it looks like redwood or something. Yeah. Well, if you look inside, like it's there's a bit of light on the outside, like the outer it's perimeter, really but the whole core is like almost red but on it looks everything. Like, uh, like it, everything. It's twisted. And looks like antlers almost. Yeah. When, right? you, when you find it on the ground, it totally looks like deer antlers. Yeah. But this stuff, it like for this piece, quite heavy actually. Yeah. It's, it's fairly heavy and dense, almost like it's a hardwood. I have no idea. No idea what this is. Well, obviously, I've never seen it before, so. We got about uh, half an hour, probably 20, 25 to 30 yeah, minutes worth of daylight. The sun's dropping fast. The sun fast. is dropping fast. The sun is definitely dropping fast. It's uh, like 4.45, so. We got wood. We got plenty of this. I know where that is easily. I can probably get yeah. more if we need it. Because uh, that's the best to go hunting at night for it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy. I'll just have a, a flashlight. Remember I said, it's easy. It's easy. But I think we should probably start about thinking about dinner oh I, I like food that yeah when, uh, when that's no I like hot. I like that idea it's a good <laughs> idea <laughs> that's my favorite part it doesn't smell like butt it smells I like feet I wish my butt sm <laughs> I wish my butt smelled like that it would be delicious I love your butt let's <laughs> Neil's 2017 I love, <laughs> I love your butt <laughs> I've got chicken teriyaki with rice and I'm a lasagna with meat, meat sauce. Sauce. We got a nice little fire burning here. And when the fire is burning inside you, reach yourself some fireball. Dun, 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 dun. Woo, woo. Fireball cinnamon whiskey. If you're out there, fireball. fireball. Wink. So we opted for first layer, which is. Yeah. I got this is uh, from MEC brand, kind of like REI brand. And this is a. Uh, second level so it's not super super warm because I overheat really easily anyway yeah but I got this on I got here. this from my figure skating days <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a speed skater I took off my t-shirts and I'm like hey get me I had no shirt on he looked like the great polar Arizona bear. polar bear it's like a polar bear then ah. I put this on I'm like for some reason I just want to do this hey so, this isn't bad yeah it's good yeah this is Under Armour um, storm so it's it's like double thick Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty warm already, you know. It's like I'm. Yeah, chilling. it's not like the super thin stuff. It's yeah. actually got 
A little bit. I feel like almost it makes like my me, pants. I feel like it makes me thinner, too. It's like, it's holding in. Yeah, it's just a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it's holding it all in. It's good that you feel that way. Oh, yeah. It's good. Oh, it's like... Now, remember when we had some MREs and we're like... What it tastes like is kind of like Chef Boyardee from Yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't taste like that. This tastes like real. Try it. Oh, that looks hot. It's hot. Try this is it. A, Try uh -oh. it. Mm. Right? It tastes... Oh, that's... Yeah. Chef Boyardee yeah. is tinny and nasty. That tastes like... It's it's a little bit liquidy. Yeah. That's it's the way I like kinda it. kind of like meat lasagna soup. It's or a, a stew. It's a stew. Stew. Dude, that sun is falling fast, man. Fast. You know what it reminds me of? When we were doing Can We Survive in the Mojave. Yeah. Oh, and you could and just And we were walk. filming, and the, and the film, and the, it was the gradually going super dark. Remember it? Did, you guys remember that video? Mm. We were sitting with the fire in front of us, yeah. and it, it seemed light, but the it, we lost light just during the, the food segment. You're like, come on, media. There are always food segments. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I do. Oh, what was that? Oh, it was just that. You okay? No, I'm all ultra paranoid ever since I saw that tarantula. I'm like, <laughs> there's one thing to see tarantulas in the pet store, to see a tarantula in the zoo or on TV. It's another one to see them in the area where you're about to go to sleep. A hairy, big tarantula. Now, it wasn't as huge as like the really, really big ones, but it was honestly the biggest spider I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. And it was like... Unmistakably a tarantula. I'm like, ooh. My neighbor had one in his backyard was as big as my hand. Oh, no. He picked it up with a glove. I, I would have, like, I'm paranoid enough sleeping in the tent, you know? Yeah. Mm. Oh, the way I look at tents is, as long as you keep it zipped up, brush Always. yourself off before you go in there, mm. that little thin tent protects you from creepy crawlies. Oh, yeah, they're not getting in. That's basically sealed. And if you know otherwise, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. Like, right? Oh, actually, they're able to. So we cut one. We were cutting on one of the logs, got tired. Imagine that. And the last bit was more rotten. You know, it's more rotten. Ah, my chopped lip, that stuff is burning. I'm sorry. That's what cinnamon does. As you get closer to the bottom, it's it's more rotten, like punky, right? It does. It doesn't burn. That's now I know why people are like. Oh, that's punky wood. Meaning it's like. Yeah, rotten. this thing. Sucks. It doesn't burn. No. I put it in there thinking I could burn the middle out and then put the two sides in. It's not working. You know, we're at 6,500 feet. It's definitely it takes a toll in work. Like your headache work. go away? Yeah, yeah. My headache has gone. Has gone. It Every wasn't really I... a headache. It was like you know when you start to feel a headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's acclimatizing to mm. the altitude. It happened last time when we went into the mountains. I got a, a slight headache. It wasn't yeah. like, ooh, 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 like I need Tylenol. It was just like, ugh. If you guys ever get that, you know how to fix it? If you, if you get it and it either won't go away or it's getting worse, you know how you fix it? Drop in elevation. Mm. You just get, you got to go down. Your body wants more oxygen. Yeah. So just even if you're like this, if we went that way, 500 yards, we're dropping in elevation the whole way, and yeah. that could be enough. If not, get out of there and get down at a lower elevation. Yeah, like I watch, I watch a lot of, you know, travel and documentaries. I learned that at Mount Everest. And when they, yeah, it's the same thing though. When they go up, 8,000 feet is usually where, like, the altitude sickness, like where you actually will throw up and you're like horribly sick, it'll affect people. And the only way to counter it is you got to go down. Yeah. You can't stay there. Yeah. It's not going away. You're not going to get better. It's the, you went up too fast, and you you're just at a higher altitude. That's why they have base camps on Everest. Yeah, and you go there and you stay there for a few days, mm -hmm. like, acclimatize your body to the altitude, and slowly start making your way up. You want? And that. I am exhausted just from just walking around constantly all day, and going up and down the hill. Because anytime we go in any direction <laughs> off here, like we said, yeah. it's downhill. Then you got to come back up every single time. My favorite part, it's the best. Dig in, show them. It's breakfast time. Ding, 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 ding. 
So for the first time ever, we found these at Sportsman's Warehouse. Uh, mm. Pre-cooked scrambled eggs with bacon. Just add water. I don't know, man. I don't know about freeze-dried anything. So it's uh, the last time I had eggs in anything, yeah. I was barfing on the side of the road. 7.30 in the morning, 27 degrees. Cold. It Again, don't be disillusioned by the lack of snow. It is... Oh, dude. Mine's like worse than yours. Let me see yours. Did you make mine extra soupy no, on purpose? No. no. Yeah, I gotta get rid of some of that. There we go. It doesn't like absorb it as good as the other stuff does. No. There, the, now it's perfect. The bacon tastes like bacon kind of chunks. Yeah. So it's not really good, dude. How were you able to just fake that? Mm. The bacon does taste like bacon, but the, the egg is just whack. I was expecting to see more animals. Like I was gung ho on hunting something, mm -hmm. you know, like when we were doing a preliminary search around here and everything like that. It looked like a good a, area down that way. We saw squirrels, we saw deers. I'm like, oh, there's animals yeah. here. And then I go around and there's like nothing, not a bunny rabbit, not a squirrel, nothing. I didn't see anything. and probably good because like while I was sitting there I'm just like uh I don't really want to gut a <laughs> rabbit or a squirrel probably but gag, if he but... saw one he would have yeah I would if I saw it I would have shot it because uh. that's what I was there for I'm like well will it gag or not that's it so <laughs> it was a really good uh trip I really liked it we learned we always learn from these things it's not just about you What's know we're not goal, just here right? yeah, yeah we're not here just to camp we're here to uh be aware of the surroundings. Be aware of where animals are. What kind of animals are? Can we survive here? You know, mm -hmm. that's like, which is what the actual title of the and channel is. Right now, no, water. Would be, no, there's no water. No, the average person would feel horrible here or just basically perish. So I'd like to, again, thanks uh, for watching the video. And I'd like to sincerely thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason why we're here. So we thank you so much. We had a lot of discussions as to what uh, types of things we can do in the future. So I'm super excited about that. Some solo stuff and of course, more trips uh, with me and myself. If you wanna get involved, if you're not one, we also do behind the scenes footage exclusively available for our Patreon supporters. So if you wanna get involved with that, the link is in the description below. And we'll see you on the next adventure.